For centuries, explorers dreamed of finding a shortcut through the Arctic that would link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. This legendary route, known as the Northwest Passage, has been the subject of countless expeditions, tragedies, and myths. For much of history, the passage was locked in by thick, impassable ice, making it inaccessible to regular shipping. However, with climate change and the retreat of sea ice in the Arctic, the Northwest Passage has begun to open during certain months of the year, sparking new discussions about its potential as a global shipping lane. While the opportunities are significant, so too are the risks, challenges, and controversies that come with it. Traditionally, cargo ships traveling between Asia and Europe have relied on two main routes, the Suez Canal to the south or the Panama Canal to the west. Both are long and congested and in some cases politically unstable. The Northwest Passage, however, offers a much shorter path. For instance, a journey from Shanghai to Rotterdam through the Panama Canal can take around 25 days, while using the Northwest Passage could shave thousands of kilometers off the route, potentially reducing travel time and fuel consumption. For shipping companies, this translates into lower costs, faster deliveries, and an overall increase in efficiency. The allure of such savings makes the passage highly attractive in an increasingly competitive global shipping industry. But the route is not as simple as it sounds. The Arctic remains one of the harshest environments on Earth. Ice may be retreating, but it has not disappeared. Even during the summer months, unpredictable flows of thick, multi-year ice can block channels or damage ships. Unlike traditional shipping lanes, the Northwest Passage lacks extensive infrastructure. Ports, search and rescue bases, refueling stations, and repair facilities are sparse or non-existent. This means that if a vessel encounters trouble, help may be days away, and conditions can quickly escalate from difficult to catastrophic. As such, only specially equipped ships, often with reinforced hulls or icebreaker escorts, are capable of making the voyage safely. Another challenge is governance. The Northwest Passage runs through Canadian Arctic waters, and Canada considers it part of its internal waters, giving it the right to regulate and control traffic. However, some other nations, including the United States, view the passage as an international strait, which would mean that ships from all countries could use it freely. This disagreement over sovereignty creates diplomatic tension, especially as interest in the Arctic grows. Canada has invested in Arctic patrol ships and increased monitoring of the region, but questions remain about enforcement and cooperation with international partners. Any large-scale use of the passage would require a clear legal framework to avoid disputes and ensure safety. Environmental concerns also loom large. The Arctic is one of the most fragile ecosystems on the planet, home to unique wildlife such as polar bears, narwhals, and migratory birds. An increase in shipping traffic raises the risk of oil spills, pollution, and disturbance to marine life. Black carbon emissions from ships can accelerate ice melting by darkening the surface of the ice and increasing heat absorption. Furthermore, the lack of infrastructure means that if a major accident or spill occurred, cleanup operations would be extremely difficult. Environmental organizations warn that while the Northwest Passage might look like an opportunity for trade, it also carries the danger of irreparable damage to one of the last relatively untouched natural regions of the world. Still, there are undeniable opportunities. For shipping companies, the shorter route could represent billions in savings over the coming decades, especially as global trade continues to expand. For Canada, increased use of the passage could mean new economic development in the Arctic, including investments in infrastructure, jobs for local communities, and greater geopolitical relevance. For the broader shipping industry, the opening of Arctic routes, including both the Northwest Passage and the Northern Sea Route along Russia's coast, could reshape global trade patterns in ways not seen since the opening of the Suez Canal in the 19th century. Technological innovation is also playing a role. Modern satellite navigation, ice prediction models, and autonomous shipping technologies are making Arctic voyages more feasible. Research into cleaner fuels and ice-capable ship designs could further reduce environmental risks. In addition, some companies are experimenting with hybrid strategies, where icebreakers lead convoys of cargo ships through the trickiest stretches, ensuring safety while keeping costs under control. International collaboration is growing too, 
as Arctic nations meet to discuss shared standards for safety, environmental protection, and infrastructure development. Looking ahead, the question is not whether the Northwest Passage will be used for shipping, but how often and under what conditions. Climate models suggest that the Arctic could see ice-free summers within the next few decades, which would make the passage far more navigable than it is today. However, the same models also warn of increased volatility, with storms, drifting ice, and changing currents adding new layers of risk. It is likely that the passage will not replace the Suez or Panama routes entirely, but rather serve as a seasonal alternative for certain types of cargo and shipping companies willing to take the gamble. In conclusion, the Northwest Passage represents both opportunity and uncertainty. It is a route that could shorten trade times, lower costs, and transform global shipping. Yet it comes with serious risks related to safety, sovereignty, and environmental impact. As the Arctic continues to change, the world will need to decide how to balance economic ambitions with the responsibility to protect one of the planet's most delicate and important regions. The Northwest Passage is no longer a dream of explorers. It is a reality of the 21st century, and its future will be shaped by the choices we make today in the fields of shipping, governance, and environmental stewardship.